everyone and welcome back to Green Minimalist Life. Today I want to cover a psychological topic and explain what prospect theory is, which was proposed by the Nobel Prize winner Daniel Kahneman and Armand Tversky. So let's just dive in. So the behavioral scientists Daniel Kahneman and Armand Tversky have received the Nobel Prize in 22 with their prospect theory, which they came up through a series of behavioral experiments. Prospect theory is an economic theory about how humans behave under uncertainty. It is further characterized by three fundamental differences from the commonly known expected utility concepts. First, the utility of an alternative course of action is not measured in terms of the final state of utility, but in terms of changes relative to reference state. We will come to that later. Accordingly, outcomes of alternative actions are first coded as gains or losses relative to this reference point and only then evaluated. This all might sound very abstract to you, so let's have a further look what the researchers uh, postulate by referring to concrete examples. The theory further argues that frequent cognitive biases influence behavior under uncertainty. In particular, people are said to be more motivated by losses than by gains and thus invest more energy in avoiding losses than in achieving gains. So individuals behave risk-taking in the area of losses, whereas they behave risk-averse in the area of gains. In an example, one group of students from the University of Stanford and British Columbia were asked the following questions. So, imagine the United States is preparing for the outbreak of an unusual Asian disease, which is expected to kill 600 people. Two alternative programs to combat the disease have been proposed. Assume that the exact scientific estimate of the consequences of the program are as follows. A. If program B is adopted, 200 people will be saved. Or B, if program B is adopted, there is one-third of probability that 600 people will be saved and two-thirds of probability that no people will be saved. So, which one would you choose? In the decision problem, as you can see, the majority of the re respondents choose the safer option, namely the program A. Saving 200 people for sure is more attractive than the riskier option of ex uh, equal expected value. Although there is a one-third chance of saving 400 people more, the students were risk-averse in this framing. Let's have a look at the second group. The second group had the same cover story but with a differently framed question. So if program C is adopted, 400 people will die. Or program D is adopted where there is a one-third of probability that nobody will die and two-thirds of probability that 600 people will die. So which uh, program would you choose this time? Here, the majority choose the second option. So the different decision problems have one thing in common. When we have to choose between outcomes involving gains, we are often risk averse, where we are more risk taking in, situa in situations involving losses. Although the two problems are effectively the same, but with a difference that outcomes are framed differently. In problem one, by the number of people saved and in the second problem by the number of lives lost. So if you have read the paper of uh, Daniel Kahneman and Armand Tversky, you might have seen this S-shaped value function. All of this, this uh, results in an S-shaped value function of the decision makers, which is concave in the positive range and convex in the negative range. In addition, the so-called endowment effect has an impact on behavior which states that individuals value things that are already in their possessions significantly more than things that do not belong to them. So this is a well-known phenomenon from an experimental research that states that one and the same person assess the value of a good differently depending on whether he considers himself the owner of the same or not. As an owner, he demands a higher selling price than he would be willing to pay as a consumer. From the perspective of prospect theory, this is explained by the change in reference point. In this case, the status quo. The owner interprets the sale of the product as a loss. 
Since losses are perceived more strongly than gains, he values the loss of utility from the, um, from the sale higher than a gain in utility from the purchase, since the latter would be regarded as a gain. So this leads to the uh, next argument, namely deteriorations relative to this reference points. So losses are felt much more strongly or emotionally strongly than improvements, namely gains. So the re researchers propose that outcomes of a decision problems are often perceived as a positive or negative in relation to a re reference point, which is in a sense kind of neutral. Based on this reference point, we decide whether an outcome feels as a gain or loss. Those reference points can sometimes even be set by social norms or expectations. So furthermore, the researchers postulate another thing. Possible environmental states are not weighted with their objective probabilities of occurrence, but by means of a probability weighting function. This tends to assign too high a weight to extremely improbable events and, to low, um, and a too low weight to almost certain events. As you can see in these illustrations, the probability weighting function transforms the probabilities of occurrence of the outcomes into probability weights. So this has been a further development um, to the following. The probability weighting function has been further developed in cumulative prospect theory. Here, probability weights are not derived from the isolated probabilities of individual uh, outcomes, but from cumulative probabilities. So just to sum it up, prospect theory can be used to explain many behavioral anomalies that deviate from previous rational economic theories. Also, cognitive biases influences our decision making. There are multiple biases, for example, the anchor and or endowment effect, which I will explain in a different video. Lastly, individuals behave risk um, uh, taking in the area of losses, whereas they behave risk averse in the area of gains. So I, I hope I was able to give you an insight what prospect theory is. If you enjoyed watching this video, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe this channel. See you next time.